Hello, Mira Garcia, and this is the second video of the mechanical ventilation for dummies. We're going to look at basic settings of volume control ventilation. So let's focus on the screen of this ventilator. This is a getting servo eye ventilator. I'm sure my colleague Alberto will use others so you can see differences. The first thing we see when we look at the ventilator is that we're going to have to choose uh, between invasive and non-invasive ventilation. This is because this ventilator in particular has a module of non-invasive. So we're going to choose invasive ventilation and then some of them have changes in how they work depends on if you're going to ventilate a small or a big patient and uh, changing how much gas goes round and round mainly and some of the settings. So we're going to set up adult. We're going to look specifically at the um, parameters that we need to set up in volume control. And these are three main um, parameters. One is the tidal volume, the volume that's going to go in and out. The other one is going to be the rest rate, the respiratory rate, with the times that the air goes in and the air goes out. And then the PEEP, which is the pressure at the end of the expiration. And this is the pressure that we're going to need to keep the lung open. Also, we're going to have to set up the FAO2, the fraction of um, oxygen that is going to be delivered to the lungs, and you know this parameter very well from other uh, devices. We're going to set up a tidal volume of 6 ml per kilo of ideal body weight. Let's presume our patient is a 50 kilo teenager or young woman. This will be around 300 ml. There are several formulas to calculate the ideal body weight, mainly based on height, age and gender, and also estimates using the ulnar length for younger adults. It is important that if our patient is overweight, we follow this, as lungs do not increase in size with our weight, and you can easily see that uh, by looking at the lung footprint on an x-ray, and if we program per actual body weight, we will potentially be causing harm. Respiratory rate, we're going to set up something sensibly for age and you all know how quickly we are meant to breathe as a standard. So now we're going to set up in between 10 and 15 of respiratory rate. So I'm going to give 15 because it's the same one that my colleague put in the other video. And then the PEEP, the minimum PEEP that we're going to tend to set up will be 5, which is the one that keeps the functional residual capacity in line. But because we are anticipated you're going to use this teaching to ventilate patients in acute respiratory distress syndrome, you will have to think if you need higher PEEPs. And you can decide which PEEP you're going to use based on ARDS net strategy. So let's say that we're going to need a PEEP of 10 to start. In terms of the oxygen, you're going to start high and then drop it as soon as you can. What are we going to do with the eye times? Volume control has a very, uh, particularity that has um, an inflow inspiratory time and also has a post time when the ventilator stops in inspiration and the air redistributes. Not going through the um, topic of is this post time really needed or not, if you set up one, you're going to have a lot of mon more monitoring tools than if you don't. How much are we going to set up? Well. In this ventilator, you're going to set up a rate and an eye time and a pause. In other ventilators, you'll have to look at IE ratio, inspiration to expiration. If we click on this and we modify the rate, it's going to go up and down. So we're going to set up, let's say, 1.1 second of flow inspiration. The pause time, which will be a 30% of the whole cycle. In this case, that will be quite high, that will be 0.5. We might need to reduce it all. And then that's going to give us a resulting IE ratio, which normally we would like to keep in patients without obstruction problems um, at 1 to 2. So we're going to compromise. We're going to leave a post time around this. This is the total I time. And what is this number? This is how long is it going to take for the ventilator to completely uh, pressure us. It just slows down at the beginning. This is not necessary, in definitely not in volume control. You want the air to go in constant. You don't want any delay on your delivery. So you can set that up at zero. Then we're going to have the trigger. This is how the patient activates the ventilator, which at the very, very beginning ain't going to be necessary. But when the patient starts waking up, you want this trigger to um, 
activate the breath when the patient wants them. And there are two types of trigger in these ventilators. Right side is flow trigger, left side is pressure trigger. And we're gonna set up the most sensitive trigger that doesn't make the ventilator auto trigger, activate without the patient wanting. We're gonna leave it at five. So this would be the basic settings in volume control, and I'll see you in the next video.